Hey guys, JT Tran here, and today we have a really special guest, one of my good friends, Elliot Chang. Voted number two most funniest Comedy Central comedian. I'll, I'll, I'll say yes. You take that. <laughs> I'll take that. Now, normally on our channel, we talk about dating, confidence, girls, right. but today I want to address something different because Elliot, if you guys don't know Elliot, is actually a successful, one of the very few successful Asian men in the entertainment and Hollywood industry. Yeah. So, a while back, one of your videos kind of went viral, and it was you talking at a college, yep. you know, molding the young minds of America, and it had to do with Asian stereotypes in the media. You want to give them a quick background of what you said? Uh, yeah, because basically this is a diversity workshop that I've been doing for a long time. Like, not every school wants me to do it, but I would say like 90 to 95% of the mm -hmm. schools want me to do it, where I just talk about how Asian men and women are portrayed in the media and then how that actually affects us in real life. Because people right. don't realize that the media does influence real life all the time. And especially with Asians, I think a lot, and yes. basically, if you're not Asian, how would you know that? But we live it every day, we see it, you know, I mean, I'm sure you see it with your students, mm -hmm. who are like, you know, for some reason I'm an Asian dude, and I'm treated a certain way when I try to talk to girls, and I really believe that is because girls who grew up in America have been affected by what they see, how Asians are portrayed, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the gist of what I talk about. Right, I mean, I watched it myself, and if you guys haven't, you should definitely check it out. Um, because it's one of the things with, with when you're Asian, you get pigeonholed. It's called the heuristics when you go up to a girl. Not every girl has these sort of mental shortcuts that they take, but there'll be a percentage that will base their decision on you based on what they saw in Hollywood, the movies, and the media. Yeah. Some of it is good, you know, hardworking, family-oriented, stable, you know, safe to be around, but let's admit it, some of it's pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> and when it's bad, it's really bad. <laughs> I mean, what, what are the stereotypes that we face? Oh um, my god. Well, okay, obviously the, no, the number one is that we're just not sexually attracted. Yes. I mean, that, that's what I get. The yeah. number, I mean, forget the whole small penis joke thing, but I've noticed every Asian dude, it just, it just seems like he's not an option. It's not even on the radar. Like we're just we're not, just not dateable. Yeah, we're not we're not dateable. We're not even like sexual beings. And growing up, uh, because we're guys and obviously we're sex minded, I noticed that all the time. And I would tell my friends, and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, yeah, because you're not portrayed that way. Yeah. Yeah. So other series, asexual, you know, worker drone, not leaders, yeah. not very masculine, and all sort of plays a part. Um, I remember growing up, and there were just no role models other than Bruce Lee. Right. Now, great role model. Love him. Love Bruce Lee. Yeah. But here's the thing. The man's been dead for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> we need new guys. <laughs> but which actually comes to the, the, the second part is the fact that, do you believe in today's sort of media landscape that has been changing? Because we've got Steve Yoon and The right. Walking Dead. Um, Glenn. We, Glenn. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell me some eyes. Please, yes. please, 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 please. <laughs> um, there's John Cho and Selfie. Selfie, yep. Yeah. Um, and there are a couple other parts. And again, like Elliot here, you are out there. And you're, you're working the mean streets of Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you think it's been changing? And how, as you as an Asian man, like, how does it feel being, like, doing Hollywood, like, facing these obstacles? Right. I, I do think it's changing. I definitely think it changes at a slower rate for Asians compared to other ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I think, you know, the black community, Latino community, as far as, like, those actors are, I think, way more assertive or aggressive, or they, maybe they have other, like, you know, media watchdog groups pushing for them harder, whereas I, I don't see a lot of people pushing for more Asian representation. You know, well, really quick side note, we know, remember when Jeremy Lin came out? Okay, yeah. huge, love Jeremy Lin. Yeah. And he was, this was, like, the first time I ever saw a reaction where someone like called him like a, a derogatory like racist name yeah. and boom guy got fired yeah. I've never seen that before yeah. so like you're saying like these watchdog groups you know we need to build up a momentum because there are very few Jeremy Lin's out there right? yeah yeah and um, I mean Jeremy I was gonna mention also so we have like John Cho uh, Steve Ewan but the fact that we have Jeremy Lin uh, because it helps that basketball is so popular. Like if he, if if it was Jeremy Lane was a badminton player, like no <laughs> one, would, player. Yeah, yeah. no one would care. But thank God he's good and he's in basketball. 
but yeah, I think, so I think things are changing. It's, it's changing very slowly, but I see it changing. And for me, as a performer, uh, Asian performer in Hollywood, seeing these changes now, it's very exciting. Uh, you know, I mean, basically, I'm lucky that I'm doing stand-up now. Like, if I was trying to be a comedian like 20 years ago, you know, I don't think anyone would have ever heard of me. It, it just wasn't the right time in America. But now, with all these changes going on, I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, not only just because for me personally, it benefits my career, but I'm excited to see the changes that are going to be coming in the future for Asian men and women in the media. Right. Now, do you think, and this is something that always comes up with my students, like, oh, it's changing, or, you know, China is going to be really important. But here's the thing, this is my belief, like I love seeing more Asian representation, but is that really going to affect the guy that can't talk to girls now? Right. Like, is somehow the Jeremy Lin attraction, you're gonna get some of that yeah. like pixie dust on you? I think, I think it would help a little bit, Yeah. But, right. but the fact is, when it comes to like, if you're just a shy guy, I mean, Asian, white, or black, you know, just because the landscape is changing for your ethnic background, if you don't learn to talk to girls, I don't think it's going to help you that much. Yeah, I see this in the K-pop scene. Like, there are all these sort of Facebook groups of like Asian guys, like white girls, or just like black girls, and they kind of like a fetish scene. Yeah. And some of them are really into the K-pop thing. Yeah. But I don't encourage my students to go for those girls because it's sort of based on stereotype. Yeah. I want the girl to appreciate me for who I am. Yeah. As opposed to like, I gotta do that, that K-pop hairstyle, <laughs> like, I'm yeah. not gonna do that, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Um, but, like, what would you say to guys that are trying to get into Hollywood now, like Asian guys out there? Because one thing that I find difficult is my students, you know, I have like hundreds, almost a thousand reviews, but very few want to do video reviews. Mm -hmm. They just don't put their face out there, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I get that. Uh, I think people not want to be put on YouTube, first of all. I think it's just a human thing, too. Some people are like, I'm just really shy with cameras. But I think you're right. I think with Asian men or, or women, I think they're even way more reserved when it comes to that. Because it, it, you know, they're not used to seeing Asian faces on any kind of screen. So they're like, well, I don't want to be the first one to do it. You know, you, know, you and I, we've gone through a couple like different pilots, you know, Asian, American oriented. I remember yeah. talking to this producer, and she was like trying to get like Asians to be part of like the cast. And she's like telling me it's like, it's like pulling teeth. Oh, yeah, a couple yeah. Asian girls, like no Asian guys want to get up there and put their face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how are we going to change the face of Hollywood if we don't put ourselves out there? It's like if we don't see the positive change, you know, then we need to become it. And it's up to each one of us to do that. That's right. I mean, it's just, I don't want to get deep, <laughs> but it's like, as Gandhi said, like you need to be the change that you want to see. And you're right, like, if there's just, like, people, if there are Asian Americans just sitting around going, you know, I want to see more of us out there, it's like, well, then we have to do it. You can't just sit there and wait. Yeah, like, no one else is going to do no, it. No one else is going to do it. Like, if you're an I'm not saying that every Asian should go out there and be an actor. What I'm saying is, if you are an actor, performer, singer, dancer, comedian, whatever, you, whatever it is you're going to be, you have to be willing to put yourself out there and make a splash. Like, you can't be passive. Because, first of all, I mean, entertainment is an aggressive you know, thing. Like, you can't be passive in aggressive business. It doesn't make any sense. So, if you're going to be an actor, you got to choose very bold roles. You know, you got to choose to play in a very specific kind of way. I mean, for me specifically as a comedian, mm -hmm. luckily, I write everything I say. Luckily, I'm also very outspoken as a person anyway. So, I'm not, I'm you not creating a character. You have the advantage of sort of molding your personality right. that, you know, people should see. When you're an exactly. actor, you don't really have that. Yeah. Sort of Freedom. Yeah, and you know, so as a comedian, I can control what I say, so I can choose to be bold. As an actor, the only power you have, um, this will answer your question, you, as an actor, you know what you can do, and it's very hard, you have to turn down those roles that you think are crappy for Asian Americans. And I know a lot of, a lot of actors aren't going to do that, because they're like, look, I've been offered this part, yeah. it's been three years since I've gotten a gig, I'm going to take it, even though it's demeaning to Asian men. You know, and I walk out on so many auditions a lot, because... I am a comedian and I can make money other ways. I can get on TV through stand up. So there are times I'll get on an audition like, hey, can you do this with like a really geeky accent? Can you play it really weak? And I'm not rude, but I just go, hey, you know, um, I don't think I can give you what you're looking for. So, you know, let me not waste your time. And I turn down roles very politely, but I do turn them down because I, I you know, I spent a bunch of years creating 
what my persona is on stage. I've created yeah. a message with my comedy, and I'm not going to yeah. go against that. A, a positive Asian brand. Uh, exactly. Brand. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is a double-edged sword, and it's hard for me to put myself in, like, the struggling Asian actor. What is that one guy um, that does a hangover? Oh, uh, uh, Dr. Ken, uh, Ken Jeong. Yeah, yeah. Pretty famous. Yeah. I'm sure making a lot of money. Would I choose to do that? Probably not. Right. I don't think you would either, but right. he's famous and he's probably rich. So right. it's, it is like, I want to use a comparison of the LGBT community. Mm. Now, it's important for us, you know, similar to what they did when they got, um, what is that, the Grace, uh, that one show? Which one? The, in the 90s, is that hugely popular sitcom. Okay. You know what I'm talking not about? Not Grace, Will and Grace. Grace. Will and Grace, Will and Grace right? Yeah. It, it was the first exposure that America yeah. had to someone that was gay, someone yeah. that was popular, someone that was three-dimensional. Yeah. And then over time, slowly through that exposure and other shows, the LGBT community got accepted, yeah. people saw them as three-dimensional human beings, right. and now look at us now. It's like, what, 60% of America is accepting gay marriage. Yeah. And I think that this is very similar to us. Yeah. We need to get out there, whether, you know, you're a comedian or an actor or trying to be a movie star. Um, I know it's a personal choice whether or not you want to accept those kind of demeaning roles, right. but I think it's very important for us to get noticed and then we can craft a message, yeah. much like the LGBT yeah. community did in getting accepted for marriage equality. Absolutely. And the thing is, it, it would be impossible to make every Asian actor in the country agree to hold hands and go, <laughs> yes, we will turn down those roles. Yo, boycott. We'll boycott. But if we all turn down those roles, I would tell you within a year, those roles will stop being written. People wouldn't write yeah. those because they're like, no one's auditioning for these roles anymore. So, so we talked about Hollywood, but you know what is interesting is the new Hollywood, mm -hmm. which is do-it-yourself YouTube yeah. fame. Because you've got like Kev Jumba, and he correlated that, his fame on YouTube, to The Amazing Race. Yep. I think that YouTube is one of the great equalizers where we can become famous or well known and then parlay that because there's no barrier to entry. There's no, you know, old boys club holding Asians back from getting on YouTube and presenting ourselves. Yeah. Like you do a lot of YouTube yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's funny because when I started doing the YouTube videos, I was just doing it for fun. I didn't know if it was going to go anywhere. And now it created a whole new fan base that I would have never had. I have so many people, especially internationally, I have so many yeah. fans from Australia. I don't know why. I have a big fan base in Brazil, and they would have never found me if it wasn't for YouTube. I was about to say, so in the other um, clip that we did with you, How to Make Women Laugh, like, I get a lot of hits for people that are like Korean, you know, Korean, yeah. um, Spanish. It's all like sort of people you might not expect. Yeah. And, and YouTube is great because it is, like you said, it, it equalizes everything because it's like the Wild West. There's no rules. You can do whatever you want. And, you know, so if you start just doing things, it'll appeal to a certain audience. And there's no, like, there's no rules. It's not like you have to apply for a license to be able to have a fan base. It's like, look, if you just pump out certain material, people will dig it. And then they'll just sub to you. And then that's it. Like, and it's been great. I've been able to, like, first off, start making money off of YouTube. And that's nice. But also, I've just been able to, you know, directly... Like, someone can write to me, hey, I'd love to see a video about this, and I can do it like that a week and get it up there. It's like just direct yeah. contact to your fan base. And you don't have to answer to the man, right? You no don't have to answer to no producer. You don't have to go to a certain demographic. Right, right. And, and we can control how we are perceived as Asians. Mm -hmm. No one comes in... When I'm, when I'm filming or something, no one comes in like, Ellie, could you make that more gooky? Can, can you <laughs> Asian you have an accent? An accent? <laughs> you know, like, no, it's like, can I you can tone just... down the sexiness, Elliot? Exactly. <laughs> no, but you can just do whatever you want, and that's why I love YouTube. I love the internet. All right, speaking of which, subscribe. Great material. It's right here, too. If you want to pick up some chicks, right here. All right, Elliot. Um, any last kind of words of wisdom for everybody here when it comes to Asian representation, where they're frustrated with what they see in the media, or maybe if they're trying to get into the media themselves. Right. right. Um, the first piece of advice I would say, it's like, you know, um, be prepared to what you're getting into. And that, cause that's, I think that's why a lot of people quit uh, entertainment, Asian or not, because they don't understand what the world is like in Hollywood or just auditioning. It's a very rough 
cold, you know, hard rejection kind of, you know, uh, society that we voluntarily enter in. It's like we are voluntarily saying, like, yeah, I want all this pain coming my way. <laughs> it's like approaching a girl. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, exactly. But we we volunteer to join this this group that may not be successful and have to deal with a lot of rejection. But as long as you know what you're getting into, it'll be easier to overcome those hurdles. The second thing is like, yeah, just keep pushing, stay strong. And, um, you know, it's a fantasy, but if all Asian actors could hold hands and say, we will turn down these crappy, demeaning roles, those roles would disappear tomorrow. Um, And also just, you know, obviously not to sound like all Disney, but believe in yourself. (laughs) You have to believe in yourself. I mean, you have to believe that you are talented. If you have any ounce of doubt that that you might not be talented, don't even try this because mm-hmm. you're you're not going to make it. It's harsh, but uh, I mean, there's a lot of deluded people who think they're talented, but there are people who are really talented and they have faith in themselves, and those are the people who usually end up on top. Yeah, and the rewards are exponential. They're just incredible, yeah. right? Whether yeah. you you know consider being famous or making a lot of money, yeah. but even just at a meta level is especially for us Asians, we are defeating those stereotypes and we are being positive role models for future generations. So. This time, we don't have to wait another 30 years <laughs> for the next like, Bruce Lee. Yeah, right? So, um, how can our audience find you? Uh, just, you know, just all you got to do is type in Ellie Chang on YouTube or Google, and you'll, you'll immediately find my Facebook, my YouTube, and everything. Just eat, but remember, it's E-L-I-O-T, one L, one T, and Chang, spelled like every Chang in the world. <laughs> and it'll also be in the box below. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs>